And they say, look, I mean, for example, last year, the so-called principal of the year in the United States, Mr. James Durkee, was the principal of the worst school in the country, most notorious school of the country. He introduced TM. That school completely rose to the top. He was given an award recently well, by former President George W. Bush for being the most successful principal in the country. He says, I was successful because I incorporated TM in my school. That's where the success came from. So other schools and principals are saying, I want that. I want that. So we're having a problem meeting the demand at this point. And as far as the bankers are concerned, we're not there necessarily because we have a big bleeding heart for Goldman Sachs. I'm there because I'd like to see a little bit of enlightenment, a little bit of broad comprehension, a little bit of compassion introduced into an industry that's entirely driven by greed. And if we can sort of moderate the greed on Wall Street and get them to do things that are actually good for the whole economy and for the quality of life of people all over the world, even a little bit, they have so much power, they have so much money, I think the whole world will benefit. That's why I'm spending a little bit of time on Wall Street. So can you give some examples, I'm not asking you to name names or companies, of how you notice changes on, on Wall Street? Well, first of all, in terms of standard measures of, of success and profitability and uh, absentee days, absenteeism, uh, health costs and the health of the employees, on all those objective measures, the companies are benefiting so much that it's a highly cost-effective program. But what really changes most is the whole atmosphere of camaraderie and the, just the quality of life and harmony in the company. It's a very different situation. You go to a very competitive hedge fund, for example, pressure cookers, highly competitive. And they maintain their competitive edge. In fact, they do better than before. If I gave you specific instances, you see these have risen to the top of the world. But the feeling in there is fabulous. They introduce a meditation room. It, it changes it. It, makes, it just it makes for a nice work environment. But don't they make less money for their clients? Because I, I, I thought, and you know, this is, I'm yeah. playing with you a little bit yeah. here, but yeah, there's yeah. some truth behind it, I think. Isn't it part of that aggressive taking the risk um, attitude that helps some of these hedge funds to be so successful? Well, it's true. You've got to have an edge, and you've got to be, you know, you've got to play within the rules. That doesn't mean break the rules. That doesn't mean transgress and do the sort of illegal things that unfortunately became so widespread a year or two ago. You've got to play within the rules. But within the rules, you can still do very, very well. And the companies we're talking about are really now absolutely the best. Now, that's a short-term goal. A long-term goal, I hope, is that the whole corporate culture of Wall Street, not overnight, but eventually will shift into a more compassionate direction. Then I'll consider myself successful. That's a big shift. <laughs> <laughs> so your, your book, man, is, uh, the full title, I'll read it, I can't remember all of it, Manual for a Perfect Government, How to Harness the Laws of Nature to Bring Maximum Success to Governmental Administration. That sounds, again, like a huge challenge. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a big book, but we've got about eight minutes remaining. Just talk us through the main points you made in the book there, John. Well, I was working a lot with the government in the U.S. Congress years back, introducing common sense solutions that are sustainable, prevention oriented. It turns out that there are solutions to most of our pressing social problems of health care and education, crime prevention, that government just isn't utilizing, um, either due to ignorance or sometimes due to pressure from what we call special interest groups in the United States, the pharmaceutical industry and the, you know, agrochemical industry and the weapons industry that unfortunately bias the decisions of government in a way that's not healthy for the people. So I was talking about common sense, sustainable, prevention-oriented solutions as a scientist, and as a policy, a policy expert. And the government was interested and warm, but things weren't happening. These solutions were not being embraced. I founded, helped to found a political party in the United States, the Natural Law Party, which is a little bit parallel to one in the UK, but it was bigger and more mainstream. Eventually that grew to absorb uh, most of what is called the Reform Party that was established by Ross Perot a few years earlier. It became quite a big political force. 
And the whole idea, the strength of that party was not because we had money, we didn't, not because we got a lot of press, not because we got to participate in the debates, but because our ideas were sound and they resonated with the people. We got a lot of votes.